Slips and falls are the most common cause of injury on the job. You have to be able to identify obvious and subtle trip hazards, like uneven surfaces, transition of footing from various types of terrain, and even weather influence hazards. Let's see what some of our other officers have to say about keeping your eyes on path and preventing yourself from falling down on the job. While conducting a perimeter patrol, the officer should keep safety in his mind at all times. By safety being situation awareness or hazard awareness. Checking his environment, not only checking his post assignments and the perimeter fencing, and making sure that the area is walking from a flat surface area to an uneven surface area. He wants to keep his eyes on path and utilize those safety reminders to keep a safe patrol at all times. First of all, before I conduct my patrol, I make sure I have all the proper protective equipment that I'm supposed to have on route and on my patrol. Also, I keep and remind myself to be cognizant of all my surroundings and the environment and the hazards that present themselves in my area while I'm conducting my patrol. When you're doing your patrol, you have to look out for the following items. Any trip hazards that might be in your way, any changing plant conditions, uh, Everything changes around here from a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, when you did your patrol yesterday, today you may find something unique in your footpath. Uh, any hazards that are there that could cause you harm or the next officer on the patrol. Some of the specific items you need to be looking out for when you're on the patrol is changing from gravel to flat surfaces. Uh, other specific things would be uh, moving from dry areas to wet surfaces that could be uh, slippery when wet. Uh, the other thing you want to look out for is anyone that's injured on your patrol that may have been uh, hurt by an item that was there uh, that they got caught up in and now you can arrive on scene to, to take care of business. Those are just a few of the items that you need to be looking out for when you're doing patrols. It's key to be aware of your surroundings and, and what's going on around you and the weather conditions, snow, ice, uneven walking surfaces while you're doing your patrols uh, to keep yourself safe, to protect yourself and as well to protect other people that may come across that area that are unaware that it's an unsafe condition with ice or ice under snow. It's imperative that, that people stay on cleared pathways, walk on designated clear pathways when they're transversing areas that could be covered with snow or ice. While on patrol, particularly at night when the visibility is low and the light visibility is as, as, as well as uh, during the day, the officer tends to take his eyes off his path. And by doing that, they've had several incidents where the officer actually tripped in a pothole or something like that on the path that he was taking and doing, conducting his patrol. He was unable to keep focused and tripped and fell and injured himself. So at night, you want to make sure that while you're conducting patrol, not only you keep the areas that your responsibilities are to watch on your patrol, but you've got to watch your eyes on path, be focused at all times about your environment, particularly at night when there's low visibility. Some of the injuries that have happened uh, have been officers uh, slipping and injuring a knee, uh, slipping, falling forward, and, and catching themselves with their hands or their elbows and uh, causing abrasions on their skin. If you come across any unsafe situation or any hazard that's on your patrol, you need to immediately stop and notify supervision. We have a no, ri a no risk option where if, a, if an officer or, or a staff or personnel are, are walking across an area where they discover a hazardous situation, snow, ice, uneven walking surfaces, they, they take the no risk option to go around that hazard as opposed to walking over that hazard. When officers are on foot patrol, some of the areas they have to look out for is a changing in elevation. Uh, this is one example where they're actually stepping up on a higher elevation and then they're stepping back down onto loose gravel and then into a possible trip hazard. The metal grating in front of this trip hazard right here can also be very slick if moisture is built up on top of it. This type of an area right here is an injury prone area that officers need to take caution when moving through the area. Situational awareness is hazard awareness. Uh, if you know what's happening around you, if you understand the situation, you'll be able to identify those hazards uh, that could come your way. Situational awareness is key to preventing injuries. The most important thing to stress is the safety of the officer comes first. Your patrol and your responsibilities on your patrol are secondary to safety. Safety is your responsibility and you need to protect yourself more than anything else. The 
weather can play a big role in how we do our job. You can't ever underestimate how weather conditions, hot or cold, can alter your surroundings and affect you personally. You have to take the right steps to protect yourself from potential hazards of being exposed to the outdoors. When it's cold outside, make sure you wear the necessary uniform, gloves, and foot gear to protect yourself from overexposure, which can lead to hypothermia or even frostbite. During hot weather, you must take measures to stay cool and prevent heat exhaustion. Pay attention to your body. Utilize the equipment the company has provided at your site, and if you need relief, ask for it. And most importantly, always stay hydrated. I'd like to take a minute to talk about something that's so important, hydration, water, exactly what you need to make sure you're doing your job successfully. Always remember, whether it's hot out or cold out, to pay attention to your body and exactly what's going on. Whether it's profuse sweating, clammy skin, whether you're getting dizzy, things like that is so important in the safety aspect of the plant. Also remember that without water, your body can't go on, so always make sure that you take time to drink some water that'll help you do your job every day. It's very important during inclement weather for officers to protect themselves by, by properly preparing and planning for the job that they're going to be completing in the elements. In cold weather extremes, many things such as wind chill, air temperature, wind speed can all affect how the body reacts to those weather conditions. It's also important for that officer to, to plan their job and how long that they're going to be out in the elements. If they know that the job is going to take a significant amount of time, we can plan for, and we do plan for, to have relief officers available to relieve them so they're not spending extended periods of time out in extreme temperatures and extreme conditions. In cold weather, you should understand your limitations. Um, if, if you get too far and you're starting to get cold, it's, it's important to stop, take a break, um, get someplace warm, and reset. If an officer is performing a task or duty and, and the, the weather conditions change or, or become progressively worse, their response should be to, to put that work in a safe condition, contact supervision and advise them of the situations and the, the current weather conditions that they're dealing with, make sure that all areas of, of security are, are in place and all of our barriers are in place and, and the work would be discontinued at that time until it's safe to, to complete that task. Situational awareness is the most important human performance tool you can use while carrying your weapon. We're all skilled on how to use our weapons, how to clean them, and when to use them. But a primary task you have to remember when you carry a weapon is that you have a big responsibility to keep not just yourself, but everybody near your weapon safe. To help you do this, it's critical that before any range training or qualifying exercises, you always attend a range safety briefing. Let's review how a briefing should be conducted and what information should be covered. All right, just a quick review of what we went over today is uh, ensure you're fit for duty. Again, anytime you're fatigued, let us know. Follow the directions of uh, the instructors at all times. Remember, when carrying a long gun, it'll be slung in front of you or at high port. Who can cause ceasefire? Anybody, Anybody can cause ceasefire, right? Again, we don't want to uh, leave the range area without notifying someone. Uh, we don't want to load or draw our weapons in the covered area or unload our weapons in the covered area. We want to make sure we have all our safety equipment in place, eye protection, ear protection, and cap protection. We want to report any injuries, no matter how minor. Again, you want to make sure you understand all the range commands. If not, make sure you let us know. Muzzle discipline, very, very important. Only safe direction is where? Downrange. Down range. <laughs> all right, trigger finger discipline. Finger off the trigger unless you're ready to do what? Shoot. Shoot. All right. And again, no bending over on the firing line. We want to be able to see what's in front of us. And also, we don't want our heads to be near anybody muzzles, right? We use the Alpha Bravo unloading and loading technique. Again, weapons malfunctions for a misfire hang fire, tap rack. Bang. bang. All right, tap rack ready. No tap rack bang. And also, squib load, raise your non shooting hand, verify that the weapon is still in a safe mode. Uh, hydrating and stretching, again, very important. If you're doing any physical activities, you have to stretch and stay loose and 
You have to hydrate every day. Um, dummy round usage, we don't use dummy rounds in the classroom. Uh, leg contamination, again, wash your hands, your face, and again, before you go home, ensure you rinse off your boots or either take them off before you go in the house. Duty and ammunition integrity, you'll put all your duty ammo in a gun box and we'll return it to you. You only reload with ammo that's given to you by the instructor. And again, we never use live ammo in the classroom, never. Any questions? Every officer should always attend a range safety briefing prior to conducting any range training. It's very important to repeatedly remind yourself of the safety rules and range procedures to help keep yourself, everyone else, and property near the range safe. And remember, it's not just your weapon or ammunition that can cause harm. Lead can be a toxic contaminant, especially for small children, so we must take every precaution we can to ensure that excessive amounts of lead do not leave the range. Follow these steps for lead safety. Wash your hands and your face immediately upon completing your range exercise. Wash your hands and your face prior to eating to prevent lead ingestion. When you go home, remove your boots immediately and wash them prior to entering your home. These simple steps will help prevent exposing yourself and others to potentially harmful lead exposure. Now, let's go down to the range. Once weapons training starts on the range, you have to be aware of brass that's been shot already loose. So eyes on path, walking, making sure you don't slip on any of the loose brass that's on the ground. If it gets to be too much, we'll stop and we'll sweep up to make sure that, there's, that we reduce that risk. Muzzles should always be pointed down range or at a, at a high port position, like when you're not shooting. And that's very important because, you know, if anything happens, if your weapon is loaded and it accidentally goes off, you don't want to shoot anyone. We definitely don't want to have any accidental discharges. Always treat your weapon as if it's loaded and follow range safety policies carefully to ensure everyone's safety. Here are some things you should also be doing. Always be aware of what's happening with the weapon. Always making sure the weapon is on safe when you're not shooting it as well is another safety measure. So there's no fingers in the trigger guard anywhere in that area. Fingers straight on the frame and also mu muzzle pointed down range. Don't ever become complacent or overconfident with your weapon. Regardless of whether you've had prior experience or not, everybody must review and follow these weapons and range safety policies on a regular basis. And when you know you're going to be on the range, make sure you're well rested, healthy, and hydrated. There are times when it may be necessary for you to do some lifting on the job. Even lifting a light box, demonstrated here properly, if not done correctly, can cause muscle strains, hand or ankle sprains, and even serious back injury. Sometimes lifting objects is part of our job and sometimes we're just helping somebody out. In either case, the most important thing is to do it without causing injury to yourself. Don't forget when you're lifting a box to lift safely because no matter how strong you are, you could still lift wrong and it doesn't have to weigh very much and you could still pull a muscle in your back. So just make sure to lift with your legs, you know, squat down and stand straight up when you're lifting something, uh, it's a heavy object. Very important for keeping yourself safe is when you're going up and down stairs carrying a load. Um, you can ask for assistance. If, if you have something to carry up or downstairs, and if it's a heavier load, mechanical, a mechanical device is preferable, but otherwise just be very careful to, to take each step at a time to know how much weight you're carrying so that it doesn't surprise you when you take a step down and the whole time you're walking up or downstairs, you know, keep safety in mind for your own personal safety. The bottom line is, think before you lift. It doesn't take much to cause a back or muscle injury. Let's review. When lifting, always assess the weight of an object and make sure your walking path is clear. Whenever possible, use mechanical help. Bend at the knees and keep your back straight. Do not twist while carrying a load. Reposition your body using your feet. Place your hands and position your body to avoid pinch points. Prepare your route by opening doors, clearing pathways, and other trip hazards such as wet floors, or transitioning from carpet to tile. For load lifting, gloves should be worn. And if the situation warrants, ask for help. 
And if there's a lot of repetitive lifting involved, those repetitive movements should be evaluated for safety considerations. Now let's look a little more closely at your office environment. Is it safe? Do you know how to get out fast in case of an emergency? Do you know the location of all emergency exits in your area? If you don't, take time today to locate them. And how about inside somebody's office? All filing cabinets must be safely positioned and configured. You need to make sure they won't tip over, and when they're not in use, file cabinet drawers and desk drawers should be completely closed. And always keep aisles clear of tripping hazards because Potential hazards inside the office come in all shapes and sizes. You wouldn't think that you could get in trouble in an office, safety-wise, but you should always be aware no matter what. Going in and out of doors, number one, they can catch your fingers. There could be a trip hazard from the carpet that's loosened up, you know, just eyes on path when you're walking through. Um, obstacles, someone might have moved a trash can, a chair the uh, serviceability of a chair, your roller might have fallen off and you're not expecting it, you can lean back and hurt yourself. Um, you just should always be conscious no matter what, you're not home safe when you get inside a building. Inside a building or an office is where safety should and must begin. Whether it's taking a look at electrical cords to make sure they're not damaged, or the proper carrying of bulky objects, clearing visual paths, cleaning up spilled coffee, water, or other liquids, even just making sure you're using approved ladders and stands to reach materials on high shelves. All these safety procedures should be followed inside the office. And please, sit in your chairs correctly and operate them properly. Don't lean back. Don't lean back and put your feet up on the desk because before you know it, you'll be flipped backwards and on the floor and possibly hurt. People get hurt in the office by chairs, doors, and drawers, but it can all be prevented. Even in an office where you're feel relatively safe. You should always be careful of opening and closing drawers. You could pinch your fingers and hands. There's been a lot of smashed fingers that are uh, totally unintentional. And uh, again, just be aware of, of your surroundings and, and don't, don't lay down your safety principles just because you're inside your office. Whether you're in the field on patrol or inside the office, there are risks and hazards. All office accidents can be prevented. Even indoors, you must stay alert and be aware of your surroundings. Situational awareness is hazard recognition. I can't say enough about this. Your proper personal protection equipment, or PPE. This is one area where following procedure and adhering to the rules will almost always prevent an injury. PPE is head protection, eye and face protection, hearing protection, hand protection, and proper footgear. Always obey site postings for PPE, keep your gear in top-notch working condition, and always come to work prepared. After clearing the access control point, you as an officer have a responsibility to protect yourself at all times. And in order to do that, you must have your personal protective equipment. Number one, you need your hard hat. That protects you from any falling objects. Second, you need your safety glasses. They protect your eyes from any debris or anything blowing into your eyes. And thirdly, you need hearing protection. Areas posted on the plant site will be required hearing and head and eye protection. So you as an officer need to protect yourself at all times and by having these personal protective equipment with you at all times. And finally, you need safety gloves. These protect your hands against any pinch points or any doors or anything that may pinch your finger or damage your hands because hands are very important for an officer to complete his duties and responsibilities. In uh, cold inclement weather like this, uh, we're provided with insulated gloves. We wear an uh, insulated field jacket, uh, insulated bibs. We have coveralls that we wear. Uh, you're going to want to wear a hat. And if necessary, we have spikes that go on the bottom of your boots for traction to prevent slips and falls. If you're not dressed appropriately, you won't have the proper focus on the job at hand. You, it's a potential for making mistakes and you could get hurt. Remember, it's your responsibility to have all your personal protective equipment with you at all times or any other equipment that's required of the plant. That way you can have a safe and productive work day. Whether you're outside all day or inside most of the day, 
Whether you're on foot patrol or operating the vehicle gates, proper use of your PPE is one safety step you can control at all times and the best way you can keep yourself safe. Conducting force-on-force -force drills is a critical training exercise. Through these drills, we improve our skills, which enable us to be successful at our jobs. But sometimes during these drills, officers get hurt. Lack of attention to changes in the environment, overexcitement, amped up adrenaline, failure to keep eyes on path are just some of the reasons why accidents and injuries occur. Let's talk about how we prevent these accidents from happening. And always, the first thing you must do is conduct and attend a force-on-force -force safety briefing. Want to make sure that today, because of the heat, everybody stays properly hydrated prior to the exercise started and then throughout the exercise. And if there's a need to request um, a timeout or anything throughout, go ahead and ask for that. We want to make sure that uh, because we're going to be wearing all the additional equipment out there that we watch our body temperatures, not only ourselves, but our controllers as well. And if there's any issues, we want to notify supervision so we can get that addressed. All right, make sure that we stay hydrated, drink fluids, you know, plenty of fluids so that when we're running around, we do not, you know, uh, fall victim to heat exhaustion. Because it is a very serious condition that it can, it can happen with, with, without you realizing it. You know, we, we make sure that we're, we're each drinking water, we look after each other, and, you know, because heat exhaustion is, is very, uh, you know, is very common. Officers can overheat and dehydrate in hot and cold weather. So don't ever underestimate the importance of keeping yourself hydrated before, during, and after the drill. Here are some other things you can do to prepare for a safe exercise. It's actually the little things that count. I make sure things like my shoes are, are tightened as much as possible so I don't trip on anything. That's an important thing. I make sure my gear is tightened as best as possible and that my weapon is slung in a comfortable position so it's not bouncing around so there's no pieces that can fall off and uh, cause other, be a hazard to other people. And I just make sure and other people make sure we all check each other and make sure we're all doing the same thing as well. Plant safety. Actions performed by the security personnel during the security drill shall remain within the bounds of all the following items. Safeguards requirements, we want to ensure that we maintain all of our safeguards in the designated fanny packs that are provided to the controllers. Plant and security procedures, we follow all procedures during the exercise, okay, so that we don't have any events. That includes ensuring that we do not cross over any radiation boundaries, uh, and then follow any directions in the security force uh, instructions, our SFIs. Watch out for plant personnel. Obviously, as we run this exercise, there will be activities going on throughout the plant. We want to be aware of that. Situational awareness is very important. You know, when we're doing FOF, we're going to be running around a lot. And we have to obviously watch where we're going at all times, especially, for example, uh, uh, radiated uh, controlled areas. Watch out for the yellow and purple uh, tape. Make sure you don't go beyond that. Awareness of surroundings may be the single largest factor in keeping the exercise safe. You're going to be out there uh, moving faster than you normally would, and you're going to be taking some actions that, again, you normally wouldn't be doing under normal operations. So ensure you're thinking about your surroundings and using STAR uh, in the actions that uh, you are taking. Report any contact or manipulation of plant equipment to the shift manager immediately. In this case, you report it to the lead controller and lead controller will take that action. Awareness of your surroundings, not running into plant personnel, not damaging plant equipment, being aware of your drill space. In other words, maintaining your situational awareness is what's going to keep you safe during these drills. Pay attention, use your human performance tools and always have on the proper PPE. The PPE that's required for today's exercises, hard hat, is what we'll be using. Safety glasses, hearing protection, which is standard, earplugs, uh, an earpiece for controllers, and uh, required boots. So everybody should have all that equipment we checked earlier. Additional PPE required for some participants, knee and elbow pads, that's for all the players, and gloves. And don't forget to stretch too. You'll be doing some maneuvers that aren't part of your ordinary day, so you need to stretch to help reduce risks of strains or pulled muscles. And remember, if for any reason, maybe an injury or an unsafe condition, anybody can call a timeout to suspend the exercise. Let's talk about driving. 
Some of us have driving patrols that take us around the plant to various checkpoints. And some of us just need to drive every once in a while, maybe to deliver something or pick somebody up. Well, along the way, accidents happen. Officers get complacent about driving. They back into posts, run things over that cause damage to the vehicle, and even crash into jersey barriers. This is unacceptable and can all be avoided by maintaining situational awareness while driving and by following these driving safety procedures. First, we start with a vehicle inspection. Before entering any of our vehicles, we want to do a safe uh, walk around of the vehicle to make sure that there's um, no safety issues. We use our human performance tools. One of those would be self-checking. So first thing I check is the tires, make sure that we have proper tread on our vehicle tires. We're going to walk around, make sure that there's nothing obstructing the area, there's nothing underneath or around the vehicle that we might hit on the way out. Uh, there are sometimes uh, jersey barriers or uh, bollards that are low so we may not be able to see them in our mirrors so we want to make sure that we have a good distance around the vehicle. We're checking for uh, cracks in our windows, um, anything that might be a safety issue because safety is first. Let's review the steps for conducting a complete vehicle pre-inspection. Check the tire treads to make sure they're in good condition and make sure the tire is properly inflated. Make sure the windshield and windows are clean and that there's no debris or cracks that could impair your vision. Make sure all fluids are full, washer, coolant, oil, and brake fluid. Make sure the battery terminals have no corrosion and are properly tightened. Check the tension of the belt and make sure it's not cracked or frayed in any way. Make sure all gauges inside the vehicle are functioning properly. Make sure you have fuel. Adjust your mirrors as needed so that you have a good field of vision. Make sure all your lights are working, hazards, turn signals, headlights, brake lights, reverse lights, and rotating lights on top if you have them. Inside the vehicle, also check that your emergency brake is working properly along with your horn, wipers, and the heat and air conditioning. Make sure you have the required safety equipment inside the vehicle. Now let's get into the driver's seat and see what else we need to do to be safe. While doing our OCA patrol, we want to make sure that we keep ourselves safe and we keep others safe. When we're unslinging our weapons, we want to make sure that we use strict muzzle control. When getting into the vehicle, we place our weapons in an approved gun rack if it's available. If not, we place it in safe condition in the center of the vehicle. Get into the vehicle and make sure that we put our seat belts on and if anybody else is in the vehicle, they are required also to wear seat belts. Before leaving, we want to make sure that we check both of our mirrors, our rear view mirror, make sure that we have a, a good visual everywhere around the vehicle. Once that you, you have a good uh, visual, you're okay to go. When driving on plant premises or perimeters, what should a driver look out for, avoid, or pay special attention to? Some of the things we look out for while we're driving are, of course, um, any obstacles that might be in the way, if we might have to back up. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we know our surroundings. We have dumpsters here. A lot of the things um, that we look for are bollards and jersey barriers, a lot of those are set lower so when you're looking in your mirrors or your rear view mirrors, you can't see them. So you wanna make sure that if you're gonna do any backing, um, you wanna get out of the vehicle and do an inspection of the area uh, to make sure that there's, uh, there's nothing in the way. Uh, some of the other things that we look for are potholes. Um, we look for puddles. Uh, sometimes you might not think anything with a puddle but uh, it could disguise a pothole or something underneath that that you're not aware of. So we wanna avoid those. Um, at all costs. Uh, safety first. We always use extreme caution and safety when we're driving. In driving in inclement weather conditions, it's, it's imperative again to plan your task and know what you're going to be doing. Thorough checks around the vehicle prior to backing up. A 360 degree check is important to know what's behind you, what's around your vehicle before moving. The other key is, is, is the speed. In any unsafe, hazardous driving conditions, the slower you go, the safer you will be. So it's imperative for officers to slow down, be aware of their surroundings, and if conditions change or get worse, to make sure that they put themselves in the, in the safest possible location or stop the work and safe their work until it can be completed at a safer time. Ballers, jersey barriers, other barricades and structures, all things officers back into because they're not aware of their surroundings. 
the best safety practice for backing up is just avoid getting into situations where backing up is necessary. But if you need to, always check the area around your vehicle prior to backing up and use a spotter and slow down. Operating the vehicle at the recommended five miles per hour or walking speed greatly reduces risk. And if an accident does occur, injuries or damage is minimized. One of our main things is speed. Here at Plant Site, we have a lot of personnel. So our, our speed is uh, five miles per hour or walking speed. So we want to always use that. There's a lot of uh, blind corners. There's a lot of uh, people in the area. So we always want to make sure that we're uh, aware of our surroundings using our uh, human performance tools. One key element to, to keep in mind when you're driving in snow and ice conditions is, is to make sure that you're staying on cleared pathways and, and plowed streets and roads uh, to, to protect yourself and to make sure that you, you can see what's going on in front of your vehicle and around your vehicle while you're driving in those conditions. Using your human performance tools will help prevent accidents, along with frequent review of driving safety procedures. Remember, when you're driving, you're operating a piece of equipment that weighs a lot more than any of us, which means it can cause a lot of harm and damage. So be careful out there and be a safe driver. Ladders and stairs, a pretty standard part of our daily routine. But believe me, you can get hurt using ladders and stairs if you don't follow basic safety procedures. You might think this is something you're proficient with, but don't get complacent. There are a lot of different types of ladders and stairs throughout the plant. Ascending or descending these include high levels of risk. Risk of injury to you, to your equipment, or to somebody around you. Let's take a look at what you should not do. Rushing up the stairs and double stepping. Don't do it. It's a good way to break a leg or twist your ankle or worse. Coming down without holding the rail. Don't do it. There's no three point contact and you could easily fall down and never jump off stairs or steps. Let's see how it's done the right way. This officer is being safe. He's cautious. He's using three point contact He's stepping appropriately and keeping his eyes on path. To ascend and descend ladders, you'll use many of the same safety procedures. As you see here, the officer ascending the ladder is taking extra precaution by allowing the other officer to hold his weapon. But remember, only pass off your weapon if your position allows. This will help you ascend the ladder safely without possible interference by your weapon. While climbing, keep your eyes facing the ladder or stairs Make sure you have a firm grip on the rails and secure foot placement, maintaining three-point contact at all times. Practice these same safety procedures when you descend. Know your site's fall protection requirements and policies. If you follow these safety measures and take your time, you'll avoid injury and keep yourself safe on the job.